Hey guys, how's it going? Underground Geek here. Well, it's getting close to closing time, getting ready to wrap things up, so I figured I'd do a little video here. I did a poll earlier to choose which comic to talk about, and it tied between Tales of Suspense 101 and Lady Killer. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like, what what's going on here you know it's like that never happens like it never has a tie on a pole and it did uh, so I'm gonna do lady killer first and this is volume two now I've done a video on volume one if you haven't seen or if you haven't read this book yet go back to my other video lady killer uh, issue one and basically that'll give you an introduction to the series and uh, this is volume two lady killer two uh, volume uh, issue one and it's continuation of the story and I really love this series of books I didn't think I was gonna love it because I'm, I'm big on superheroes but the character is just very very likable and the story is fun it's set in like the 1950s 1960s um, era you have the classic uh, homemaker wife that is not actually the classic homemaker wife she has all this stuff going on behind the scenes that the family don't know about and in the first season it deals with everything and her working for a company and in this season it deals with the hecticness of her being freelance and all that that entails and uh, if, so if you haven't uh, read these books yet I'm going to tell you a little bit about the character and then if you want to leave to go read the books I'll you know I'll tell you hey just stop now but basically Lady Killer like I said is set in the 1950s 1960s you have this uh, main character and uh, so everything seems fine and dandy but on the sidelines uh, she is actually something else entirely and uh, so it, all these books are pretty fun because they always set up uh, in like this classic uh, sense and then all of a sudden like this hectic fight breaks loose so it's pretty pretty awesome uh, so that's pretty much all I can tell you without like really uh, spoil, spoiling things for you so now I'm going to talk about the actual story uh, and I'll go ahead and tell you who's who's doing everything. The story and art is by Joelle Jones. Now, in the first volume, it was her and, and somebody else. I can't remember. Uh, it may be Laura Allred, uh, but it was her and somebody else. And then this uh, volume is her by herself. And uh, then the colors are by Michelle Madsen. The letters are by Crank. The cover is by Joelle Jones and Laura Allred. And the publisher is Mike Richardson. Um, uh, you know, it's it's a very fun book. If you're into that 1950s, 1960s, mixed with a little bit of murder, mixed with a little bit of action, suspense, this is going to be a real good series. I think this would make fun movie. Uh, th this would actually be a really good movie. And somebody said that they want, like, um, what's her name? Um, gosh, Mr. and Mr. Smith, uh, Angelina Jolie. They want Angelina Jolie to play this part, but uh, I think somebody else might do very well. I think she would do great as this because it's basically Mr. and Mrs. Smith. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if she's really got the looks for it, but um, don't hate me. But anyway, so basically we start uh, Volume 2, and we have our main character here. And she's basically doing a Tupperware party, okay? You know, they used to do these all the time. They still do these around my neighborhood. What you do is you set up a Tupperware party, you would go to somebody's house, you would try to sell all this stuff, you would show them how to do everything. It's an excuse for everybody to get together and gossip and, and drink uh, sweet tea and eat cake and things like that and hang out. And uh, at the end, you know, the women would set up orders. Well, here we are again. She's She's got these people at somebody's house and uh, they're just gossiping. They're gossiping while she's trying to teach them about the product. And then at the end, she gives them this look. 
she always gives the same look and all the issues. It's almost like an animal watching their prey. She just looks them straight in the eye, kind of uh, uh, up through her brow, and she says, how many sets can I put you ladies down for? And they're just staring at her. And she said, anyone? Clicking that pen. And then um, everyone's starting to leave, and she's cleaning up, and she can hear the two old women in the back saying, I can't believe she would show up after just getting divorced. She has no shame. I heard she traded up for a new model. It figures with the way she cooks. And they're talking about somebody that just left. Well, then the uh, the bigger lady goes to the, to the restroom, and as she's in there, um, I think her name's Josie, uh, just uh, walks right in and pegs her over the head with a ball peen hammer. She did. So then whenever the other lady goes to check on her, uh, she slams the door on her and then starts to try to uh, get her into the bathtub. Now this is a big old lady and uh, she's not necessarily half her size. So she's trying to get her in there. And then as she walks into the kitchen or, or walks back in there to the other lady, she says, everything all right? And the old lady's like pouring whiskey into their coffee. And she goes, uh, yes, fine, just a bloody nose. And she looks at her and, and, and she's got blood all over. She says, a bloody nose? Well, you look awful. She says, uh, uh, I hope you didn't get any on the carpet. And she goes, of course not. And before I forget, your nephew sends his regards. And then whammo, smacks her. And she's smacking her with the hammer side a couple of times. And then turns it around on, on the, uh, the nail puller side and cleaves her with that. And I was like, dang, that's rough. So then basically we get a dialogue here and some cutaway scenes where... Uh, she's trying to dispose of the bodies all by herself and she's talking about how she used to have somebody for this but that's what happens when you go into business on your own you have to do all this by yourself she's trying to cut the bodies up they're getting everywhere uh then she pours uh some acid in there in the end to try to get rid of them and she's trying to get them in bags and uh or no she doesn't try to put them in acid she's trying to she's trying to put them in the bags and the bags doesn't work and they're tearing so then she figures out that she'll put them in the Tupperware <laughs> so she puts all the body parts in the Tupperware cleans everything up everything's spick and span loads them up into her car and then she notices a note on the window it says sorry we missed you we will call again she's like hmm something is up so she drives off in her car and I thought for sure her car was a taxi yeah I saw that yellow Cadillac and it just screamed taxi but I think that was a pretty cool coat like you know it was a fun color and popular back then in the day you know so that it kind of makes sense um, but so she's uh, traveling along in that car she go she's uh, going to Coca Beach and uh, that's where they live and you know she walks up they're having a barbecue in the back it's just like the first volume she strolls in there, gives him a kiss. He's like, hey, you know, and they're having a family dinner. And he said, uh, you know, did you uh, did you pick up that stuff that I had? And, she, and he said, oh, she said, oh, I forgot it. You know, I'll go back. And uh, then they noticed that the his mother is acting up again. And if you read the last uh, volume, uh, the mother finally saw her, saw the wife. Uh, as she was killing someone because basically she's a hired hitman and uh, then she also saw an acquaintance of hers which she had some dealings with in the past so it brought it all back you know and uh, so ever since then they hadn't been doing very well and he said you know you should talk to her have a gal powwow and she's like what a gal powwow we're not talking like you know we're not and he goes oh come on and she's like okay and so he she she strolls in there to try to talk to her and you know when she's talking to her it's different than when she's talking to her husband she doesn't keep up that same uh that same tone she basically just goes in there and starts arguing with her and says look all right mother let's clear the air i know that things have been tricky for you after what you saw in seattle and uh, she said, but what is needed now is for you to put all that behind you, continue life as usual. And she said, what, what are you, what you are, I will not forget. I will chase you from my son and his family. And she says, keep your voice down. She goes, you will have no place with us. And that really struck uh, uh, Josie. I think it's Josie. 
uh, it really struck her. I mean, she gives this look, and then they uh, then they said, "Hey, where's the party?" And that's when the uh, the husband's boss and uh, I guess his wife walk up, and the boss is just a huge tool. He's a big alcoholic. You can tell by his rosy red nose. Uh, he's also a player. He's got a young wife, and he's also hitting on uh, the main characters. The main character the entire time, Josephine, and uh, I mean, he said he says I do fine, but not as fine as you. And I'm like, oh my god. So then they're all getting around, and of course the uh, boss is being loud and obnoxious and stuff. And he says uh, he tells a crude joke, and then like the entire family's just like, oh my gosh. And then the, of course his wife is just he 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 he. And he slaps uh, Josie's husband on the arm. He's like, hi, isn't that funny? Ha ha. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's so funny. So they go to leave. And, of course, the boss has to uh, hit on the wife one more time before they leave. And she's like, is he okay to drive? And I said, and the husband said, I don't know if he would be okay if he wasn't drinking. You know, it's like <laughs> he drinks so much, I think he's actually okay. And uh, so then we get the next day. Uh, we cut to the next scene here and she's out buying a car you know she goes to a car lot just randomly to buy a car makes up some story to go on a test drive and then uh, as they're going on a test drive she says uh, the salesman says uh, I didn't know we were going off road and he says I'm, I'm getting the idea that it's not the car that you're interested in ma'am is there anything else I can help you with because they're going out in the middle of nowhere and so he's a sleaze ball he grabs her leg and she says, yes, there is something you can help me with. And basically stabs him in the neck with a steak knife. Uh, that's the thing about Josie. She likes to use like unconventional weapons. Anything that you could normally just get around the house. That way it doesn't... I think it's smart because it doesn't really raise suspicion. Um, so it's, it's a very good idea. And so at that point, she's taking him to the drop point. She's going to drop his, bo his body off in the, in the swamp that they were driving to. He go, she goes to take him in there and basically trips, falls in the freaking swamp, gets it all over. The guy falls on top of her. And uh, she's given these lessons the entire time. She says, one, perseverance is key. The price of success is hard work. So that whether you win or lose, you can be proud that you have applied the best uh, of yourself to task at hand. Two, learn from your mistakes. Look forward to failure. This is how you learn to succeed. And that's as she's got the dead guy laid on top of her. So she's going to her car to get her bone saw. She comes back out. She's talking about the rest of the uh, list there. Five, have the right tools. Four, always be prepared. Six, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And she's trying to cut the dude's head off. And then all of a sudden, bam, somebody throws their headlights on. And she's like, oh, no. And then she said, seven, trust your instincts. And so there she is shocked, and it's too big continue, and it's like, oh no, somebody has spotted her. And that really gets it going uh, for the next volume. You know, you just, you don't really know where it's going. It's very exciting, and uh, that's exactly how this book, this volume two is. But that, th this kind of gives you an introduction to volume two. I don't want to do every issue because I want you to read it. I want you to go out and get it. Um, I'm ordering uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2 just because I really enjoy the story, but at the same time, I really enjoy the art. And I randomly bought an issue the other day. I was at a uh, LCS, or no, I was at a uh, Barnes & Noble. And I'm looking around their dollar racks, and all of a sudden, I see Issue 5 of uh, Lady Killers. And I was like, holy crap, because it, it was a really cool cover. And I was like, I'm gonna get this. You never see these. Like this is this is 2018. This sort of series come out in, in uh, 2015 and 2016, and they just randomly have an issue. Like I'm getting that. And uh, I, but like I said, this is a very interesting story. I hope you check it out. I mean, uh, you, you've got this 1950s, 1960s housewife that's actually a hitman on the side, and now she's freelance trying to work her way through that. I mean, this is fun. This is very interesting. It's a very original story. The artwork is awesome. Joelle Jones does a great job. And she she gets better because I've seen some of her early stuff and it's kind of rough. But, I mean, she has gotten, she's went leaps and bounds. And if you recognize this style, it's because she's actually drawing for DC right now. She's doing some Batman issues. So get ready for that. And she's doing a cover for Teen Titans coming up. So, yeah, I mean, it's very exciting. But all right, guys, that's all I got. 
hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you later. And uh, have a great day, guys. Underground Geek out.